Matt with Man vs. Deer, and today's video we're going to be talking about the most common terrain types that you're going to encounter when you're chasing white-tailed deer. We're going to give you a brief overview of what this terrain feature looks like, and we're going to tell you how to find it on a topographical map. Let's jump into this video. What a roller coaster of a season it has been. Welcome back to the channel guys. If you're new to the channel, make sure that you smash that subscribe button. Make sure that you like the video and make sure before you leave, you drop a comment. This video is going to actually be the start to a mini series that I'm doing about terrain features and how to hunt them. This video is going to be a broad overview of the most common terrain types you're going to encounter when you're hunting white-tailed deer. And in the coming days and weeks, I'm going to be putting out videos about these features individually and how to hunt them. So make sure that you guys subscribe to the channel so you can see that content when it comes out. And hopefully this video is helpful to some of you guys. So with that being said, we're gonna jump straight into it. The first terrain types we're gonna cover are terrain types that exist in hilly areas. And we're gonna start off by talking about the most common one, which is a ridge. Now imagine a ridge as a hill that's been stretched or elongated, right? Ridges can run 100 yards, they can run a mile. They can be by themselves, they can interconnect with other ones and form giant systems, but for simplicity, imagine a ridge as an elongated hill with steep sides on either side of it, okay? You can find these on topographical maps by looking for steep lines. The closer together the lines are on a topographical map, the steeper the terrain is, with some kind of flat spot or military crest at the top. And that's how you're gonna find ridges. This is what these look like on a topographical map. When you scout these, you're going to want to look for a sign at the top. That's kind of where deer tend to hang out. Uh, but we'll get into that more in the ridge-specific video. Uh, this is how you find these on a topographical map. Though. The next feature we're going to cover is called a draw. And imagine a draw as a small valley. When a draw gets really big, it's considered a valley. But a draw is basically where two ridges meet and form kind of a water drainage with super, super steep hills on either side. And this is what a draw looks like on a topographical map. You're going to be able to identify these on a topographical map because they kind of have a bowl shape at the top of them. They have really, really steep sides going down where the water drainage would be, and they have a very, very distinct look. And there's also anywhere you have ridges, you're going to have drainages or draws. And it's just basically anywhere that two ridges meet and create super steep terrain with a water runoff and kind of like a bowl at the top. Next feature we're going to talk about is called a spur. And a spur is a small micro ridge. So say you've got a ridge that runs this that runs this way, and you've got a small micro ridge jutting out this way. That's a spur. Spurs can be very, very subtle. In fact, sometimes they're very, very hard to see on a topographical map. This is what one looks like on a topographical map. You can spot these pretty easily when they're visible on a topographical map because the lines are kind of uh, running a different way than, than the lines of the regular ridge are. There's basically like a wave in the terrain, right? And that's what those little uh, spurs are. Sometimes you have to put boots on the ground to even find these, but when you do, they tend to be hot spots for buck bedding activity. So if you're scouting a ridge out, make sure that you don't neglect to drop over the side and look for these little spurs because they can hold some monster deer on. The next terrain feature we're going to talk about is a saddle. And imagine a saddle as two high points in a ridge that are connected by some a little bit lower elevation with easier walking. And a saddle kind of goes like this, uh, basically like a horse saddle would, right? It's, it's a lower lying area that connects two, or high, two high points. And when you look for these on a topographical map, and they can look different than this. This is just the way that I find them. You're basically going to look for two, two circles, and it kind of looks like a figure eight to me, but you're going to look for two circles with uh, the lines getting a little bit farther apart, meaning that there's some flatter land in between them. So if you're looking at the tops of ridges and you see something that looks like this, you can bet that that's a set. Saddles are hot spots for deer activity, uh, particularly when they're cruising front to get from one high spot to another during the rut. You want to look for trails on these things. Next terrain feature we're going to cover is called a bench. And imagine a bench as a very, very steep ridge 
hillside that has a little break about halfway down or, or somewhere on it, you know, but it breaks a little bit, levels out, and then continues being steep. That little level section is going to parallel the ridge and it's going to be called a bench. These are kind of tricky to spot on a topographical map, and here's an example of that. But they're tricky to spot because they're not square. They're basically a section in the topographical map where the lines get farther apart for a minute and then come back together. But if you see that, that's typically a little bit more level section and otherwise very, very steep hillside. And you're going to use that to travel that hillside as opposed to walking the very, very steep parts. We are going to jump into some flatter terrain type features now. And the first feature we're going to talk about in that category is called a finger. Imagine a finger as a terrain type that juts out in a long skinny fashion into a different terrain type. That's a finger. It can be woods that juts out into water. It can be CRP that juts out into an ag field. It can be uh, a section of, of cedars that jut out into otherwise open timber. Any long skinny section of uh, habitat that juts into a different type of habitat, that's a finger. And here's a good example of what that looks like. Fingers are known for being like hot spots for, for bedding areas for big bucks. They're typically a little bit thicker. And like I said, they can be a lot of different things. But what you're going to look for is a long skinny section of terrain jutting out into a different type of terrain. Transition areas or edge cover. You'll hear them called those two things. But basically what a transition area or an edge is, is where two different, uh, two different terrain types meet and form some kind of line. These are probably gonna be the easiest thing that you're gonna be able to find on topographical maps because they do kind of form a definitive line. And here's what that looks like. When you find these, you wanna make sure you put boots on the ground and walk them. You're usually gonna find trails paralleling them. Uh, you're usually gonna find a good amount of food, uh, whether it's uh, woody browse or mass trees or, or where cropland meets CRP. You're usually gonna find a uh, diverse enough habitat that there's a lot of deer sign. And when you find one of these, you definitely wanna walk it and see what that area has to offer. Moving on, we're gonna talk about inside corners. And imagine a field, uh, and imagine a corner of that field, right? An inside corner is where you take the corner of that field and you walk about 50 yards into the woods on the downwind side and you set your stand up. The space between your stand and the corner of that field is the inside corner. Those are basically gonna funnel deer movement. And the idea behind that is that big mature deer, if they wanna get from where they are to the other side of this field, the fastest way is gonna be to go through that field, but bigger deer are smarter than that. So what they'll do is they'll skirt the edge and that's called an inside corner. Uh, if you got one of those and you got the right wind for it, any time of year, uh, those can be hot spots if you've got deer in that area use, utilizing those trails. An oxbow is the next thing we're talking about. And an oxbow is basically where a river is flowing and makes a big U shape. And that section of land inside that U, that is an oxbow. Those are really easy to find on a topographical map. Here's a good example of that. And when you find one of these, you're gonna find trails coming in and out of that oxbow uh, where it kind of skinnies down at the front of it. And then usually there's some good bedding on the back of them. The next feature, and you're gonna hear this quite commonly, and you're gonna hear a lot of different words for it we're talking about is a pinch point, a funnel, a bottleneck. You can call it whatever you want, but it's essentially a, ter a terrain type that gets, starts out wide and gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's basically going to force deer to move through a certain area because they do not want to move in the surrounding terrain. So let's say that you have uh, a section of woods that starts out wide. And as it gets to a field, there's a thin strip of woods that cross that field and it connects to bigger woods. That thin strip of woods going across the field is going to be a pinch point. Why? Because deer, when they're moving through those woods, they don't want to come out of those woods and get exposed. So they're going to continue through the skinny part of those woods. And it's a good, it's a great place to ambush deer, especially during the rut. Funnels can be in all different terrain types. They can be all different shapes and sizes. I'm going to throw some good examples of what those look like on topo maps here. But the, the end result of a funnel remains the same, and it's that it funnels deer or forces deer to move through a specific area because the terrain is unfavorable and, and the favorable terrain pinches down and they want to stay in that favorable terrain. And the last terrain type that we're going to talk about is CRP, and you'll hear that word a lot, but and if you don't know what CRP is, it is basically a field in a brushy transition back to forest, right? Very, very thick hard to walk through, great for bedding. Uh, a lot of times it's gonna be on the outskirts of fields or in an area that was cleared 10 years ago. 
uh, you're going to want to look for trails coming in and out of it. Uh, deer like to bed in it. They'll a lot of times feed in it because there's going to be a lot of woody browse. Here's a good example of what CRP looks like next to some ag field. Uh, but you definitely don't want to overlook those either. All right, guys, that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. Like I said, it was just a brief overview of the terrain features you're going to cover while you're hunting deer, and more importantly, how to find those on a topographical map. If you want more details about how to hunt these features specifically, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because in future videos, I'm going to do a video of these features one by one and cover exactly how to hunt them or at least give you some good places to start. So make sure that you watch for that. I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.